So when somebody buys a 3D printer, they get very excited about printing certain types of models. One of the types of models that you know a lot of people are very interested in are print in place models because they are so much fun to print. And um, if you have uh, children or grandchildren, um, they just love these kinds of models. And understandably uh, so, because they are incredibly uh, intricate and, uh, and fun and, and they make great toys. Unfortunately, these kinds of prints are difficult, especially if you are beginning in the 3D printing hobby. Um, these are not the kinds of prints that you're going to find uh, easy to print. And the, and the reason for that, of course, is because they are made up of individual parts that interact and move. And in order for these kinds of models to print properly, your printer has to be really well calibrated. Uh, the printer has to be tuned uh, just, just right. And oftentimes, uh, you also have to have the right settings in your slicer in order to make this work. So a lot of people get frustrated when they get their brand new 3D printer and they try to print one of these things out and it doesn't uh, work. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to tune your uh, printer in the, the slicer so that you can get really great print in place models and um, uh, how you can make it uh, work uh, for you. So if you're interested in knowing how, if you've had problems printing these types of models, stay tuned and I'll show you what you need to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is bring in a model that we're going to be working with. And I'm going to be using uh, this really fun print in place model called the Flexi Raptor. And I really love this, uh, this uh, model. But um, it is not the easiest model to, to print because as you can see, there are quite a few interconnected parts that will not work properly if your printer is not uh, calibrated. So the first thing that um, we're gonna do to, to try to get a successful print is slow down the speed of the printer. So we'll go to print settings and we'll go to speed and we're going to uh, slow down the first layer. So at this point, I've got the first layer at 50 millimeters per second. And that is just too fast. It just isn't going to work. So we're going to slow it right down to 20 millimeters uh, per second. Now, one thing that I didn't mention is the fact that I'm going to be printing this on a Ender 3 that has been set up with clipper. So um, another thing that I'm going to try to do is not only ensure that this prints, but that it, it prints as quickly as possible. Now on an Ender 3 profile in Prusa Slicer, that really is just the default uh, Ender 3 uh, profile, this uh, Flexi Raptor would take about three and a half hours to print. But with the profile that I have uh, set up uh, in Prusa Slicer, it will print in approximately, well, let's, let's slice it and, and see how long it will take. I'm just gonna move out of the way here. We'll slice this. And uh, we can see that it will take, slowing down the first layer, one hour and 15 minutes. So on a uh, well-tuned, uh, printer with Clipper, you can really print this uh, model relatively quickly. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we, we've done is slow down the first layer. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to increase the uh, height of the first uh, of the first layer. So uh, I have it set at uh, 0 0.35. Now the default value is uh, 0 0.2, but I'm going to actually increase this to 0 0.4. And the reason that we're doing this 
is because we want that first layer to be as high as possible so that it will stick to the build plate. Uh, that's the, the goal here to make sure that that first layer, which is really key, will stick to the build plate. Now, uh, let's go back to the model here. And I want to just uh, show you why this is uh, key. If you take a look at the model, uh, you'll see that if we go down to the first layer, uh, print and place models are actually made up of, and I'm going to move out of the way again, uh, print and pr place models are made up of individual parts that have to be laid down on the build plate. And if your printer is not well tuned, there's a good chance that one of these parts will be knocked away or will shift and the print will fail. So given the fact that there are multiple parts that are being laid down, it is absolutely key that we get those first few layers down perfectly. And that requires um, a fairly slow uh, print speed and also a fairly high first layer, which is what I did by increasing the first layer from 0 0.2 to uh, 0.4, which is going to just double the height of the first layer. All right. Uh, now comes the key uh, change that we're going to make. And that is uh, that we're going to ha add a height modifier. So we click on the print and we go to height range modifier. And this will uh, bring up a number of options. And again, I'm going to move out of the way here. This will bring up a, a number of options here. Uh, that you can see start at height stop at height and layer height all right so what we're going to do is click on the layer uh height option that we've we've created we're going to right click and we're going to add settings and the settings that i'm going to add um is the speed setting all right so what we're going to do is check off all the uh, speed settings that we want to use. So we're going to check off top solid infill, solid infill, small perimeters, perimeters. We're going to use uh, infill and external perimeters. So we're going to basically check off all the key speed settings and we're going to say, okay. And what I'm going to do is uh, change the speed from the current speed, which is listed here to something very slow. So again, 20 millimeters per second for all of these values. And the reason I'm doing this is because with Prusa Slicer, if you slow down the first layer, you can't by default slow down any other layers. But with the uh, layer range settings, you can slow down layers above the first layer, which is what we're doing here. So I'm going to slow down all the different um, options here for speed to 20 millimeters. And I'm going to tell the printer that after two millimeters have reached here, that it can continue with regular speed. So go to the default uh, speed in the profile that I'm using. Essentially, this will allow the print to um, basically be laid down. It's going to be all uh, nicely set on the build plate, and then I can speed it up. So I don't want to wait for this print for three and a half hours. I don't want to print it at 20 millimeters per second because that's really slow. And I don't even think it's necessary. You can print it a lot faster than that, but you do need to print the first, let's say, two or three millimeters really slowly to ensure that the print is on the build plate and it's not going to come off. So let's slice this and see how long it's going to take for this to print with the modifications that we made. All right, so with all the mods that we made, it's going to take two hours and three minutes to uh, print this model, which is um, pretty good. 
considering uh, the fact that it takes uh, like three and a half hours to print the same model on a typical Ender 3 profile. Right, so the Flexi Raptor print in place turned out very well. All the joints are moving properly and the print quality is very good despite printing at a relatively high speed. Now, before I end this video, I want to share one more suggestion. If you find that the parts of your print in place are fusing together, there's a setting in Prusa Slicer called the XY compensation that can help. In Cura, there's a setting like that as well called horizontal expansion. And um, it basically does essentially the same thing. So in Prusa Slicer, you can find this setting under print settings, advanced, and right here, you can find the XY size compensation. Uh, and um, what this setting basically does is grow or shrink a model in the XY plane by a specified amount. And it's used when a printer is consistently printing too large or too small. So if your printer is not dimensionally accurate, then you can compensate with uh, this setting. And um, since uh, print in place models like this require a dimensionally accurate uh, printer, uh, this setting works very well with uh, helping you out if you're having a hard time printing a model that works. So what happens with this setting is that a positive number expands the XY dimension and a negative number shrinks the XY dimension. So let me show you how it works. Right now with this uh, model, if we slice it, you'll see that the parts are very close together. Now let's say that your print in place model is fusing together. The parts cannot uh, function properly. What you can do is change the setting here to a negative number. So let's say negative 0.1 actually zero one. Let's make it just a, a very tiny change. And if we uh, slice this, we'll see that the gap has become wider between the parts. So it's not all that perceptible, but it is somewhat wider. Now we can make it even wider if we want. So for example, if we change it to z minus zero, point zero six you will see a noticeable uh, change in the relationship between the parts so let's slice this and as you can see the gap is even wider now so what this will do is compensate if your printer is not dimensionally accurate but ideally what you would do is try to get your printer to be as dimensionally accurate so that uh, you don't have to use this setting. It's best to have a printer that works properly rather than using this uh, setting. So that's it. I hope that some of these suggestions have been helpful to you. And uh, if you have gotten some value from this video, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So until the next video, have fun and keep on printing.